I got a great question from a viewer that I want to answer. So if you feel like you might be having trouble breaking down proteins correctly, in this video I'm going to help you understand the best enzymes to use to digest proteins better. I'm even going to help you understand who shouldn't use these enzymes. Let's get at it. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So it was over on our shorts version of our Do Digestive Enzymes Really Help video that user uh, Ashuto Shush Josh, Ashuto Shosh. A shoe tosh, Josh, something blah 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 blah. Boy, I really brutalized that one a little bit. Sorry about that. A shoe to shosh, Josh, shoe to sh shoe to shosh. All right, so they say which particular enzyme helps in digesting protein properly? Thank you. So, this is an interesting topic and can be a little bit confusing. So, the first thing we want to understand is when we're looking at, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some digestive enzymes that help me break down protein, you're going to see those marketed as proteolytic enzymes. But before we get to that type of thing, I want to make sure you understand that the most appropriate and the most effective enzyme to help us break down protein is something that's created here in the stomach called pepsin. And the body makes this for us. Thank you, body. But it starts out as pepsinogen, and it really depends on the environment that it's in that dictates how effective that pepsin is going to be. So what needs to happen is this stomach needs to be making hydrochloric acid to acidify that stomach, and then in that acidic environment, that pepsin gets activated and really helps us break down our proteins very effectively. So the problem is not always that, oh man, this person doesn't have enough pepsin. It's usually that the person is not making enough stomach acid, or maybe they're taking some kind of medication to turn off stomach acid because they're trying to relieve some type of acid reflux symptom. The reality is that in most cases, acid reflux is caused by not having enough stomach acid. It's not too much stomach acid like advertisers want us to believe. There's just not enough acid in there to trigger this valve at the bottom of the esophagus to close. And when it's not being triggered to close, the small amount of acid a person has will come back up and burn them. So I'll put some links in the description below this video to some studies that kind of said, well, when people use PPIs, it doesn't seem to cause any trouble for pepsin. We even see that when we turn off stomach acid with these PPIs, that the pepsin even increases. But they're not really looking at, is it being activated? And is it working correctly? And my viewpoint is I'm kind of wondering, when you turn off stomach acid, does the body make more pepsin because it's just trying to do anything it can to try to break down this protein that's not being broken down into amino acids. The body needs amino acids for a lot of functions like rebuilding our tissues and repairing things that go wrong. So amino acids are very crucial. So you would think that the body would do whatever it can to make these things function. But you'll also see in these links just in the description below all these scientific papers that say, yeah, pepsin doesn't work if there's not acid there to trigger it. So we really want the acid there. So with most people that are having trouble breaking down protein, they don't really need to supplement with pepsin. They need to take steps to make sure that they're acidifying their stomach correctly. And we talk a lot about using betaine HCL capsules, and you really want to use that the right way. I'm not going to dig too far into that into this particular video, but I'll put a link in the description below for my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, where you can get that totally for free. And you can just jump to chapters three and four, and that walks you through figuring out, are, am I having low stomach acid issues? And what steps could I take to repair that using betaine HCL? It's important to use HCL the right way if you're going to use it. So get that book for free and read through that to understand that if you feel like that might be a problem for you. But that's the biggest factor. Now, here's something else that you'll see in my book or in our free digestion course or any of our courses is that we talk about supplementing with betaine HCL to fix a low stomach acid, but we talk about using an HCL without pepsin. So the problem is most people need to work up to four or five capsules of HCL, at least temporarily, to really fix a low stomach acid issue. And most betaine HCL capsules that you find on the market will contain pepsin because again, pepsin helps us break down protein. But if somebody's taking four or five capsules that contain pepsin, in most cases, that's gonna create some discomfort. That level of pepsin being activated 
is not very comfortable for most people. So we talk about using one that does not contain pepsin because your body should be making the pepsin anyways. It's just waiting to be activated by an acidic environment and so adding the hydrochloric acid in those betaine HCL capsules is usually enough to get that pepsin working correctly. And so we'll put a link in the description below to the one that we use. I'm not saying you need to use that, but I know you're going to ask. And I know that it can sometimes be hard to find a betaine HCL that doesn't contain pepsin. But this right here, that's the most important enzyme when it comes to breaking down protein. But keep in mind that the stomach makes this enzyme. Our pancreas makes a lot of other enzymes that really help us break down our food correctly. The foods that we consume also usually contain enzymes, but when we cook those foods over a specific temperature, then it kills those enzymes. So they're not really beneficial to us. But we also have more enzymes in our large intestine, in our, whoa, what in the heck? We took but we also have enzymes in our large intestine. The, the good bacteria in there also produce enzymes that help us break down our food as well. But when you're looking at, okay, I want to supplement with some enzymes that are going to help me break down protein. Well, it's usually protease is the main enzyme that's going to be really helping you break down your protein. And again, you'll find that marketed as proteolytic enzymes if you're going to search, you know, for some type of supplement. And you might find different ingredients in there and different type of enzymes that are going to help you break down that protein. Bromelain is a very popular one and that comes from pineapples. You'll also see papain a lot, which comes from papaya. You may see fungal protease or bacterial protease. And these are made basically by like fermenting and they create these enzymes. And it's similar to what can happen in the body as well. When you have fungal or bacterial good guys here in the large intestine, they produce these enzymes that help us break down this food further. They're doing this to break down food in their environment, but it really helps us by breaking that down. It makes it easier for us to get more of the nutrients out of that food. So I'm fine with all of these. You're usually going to see uh, like pancreatin. That's going to be like, and that's just a, basically a mixture of enzymes that would usually come from the pancreas. And in the ingredients, you'll also see amylase and lipase, which are enzymes that our body uses to break down carbohydrates and fats. But most of these proteolytic enzyme uh, products out there are usually going to contain these as well because they just want to give you everything you need to kind of digest your food a little bit better. But just keep in mind, in most cases, especially in the medical world, these types of enzymes are being used because there's digestive malfunctions that aren't allowing the person to break their food down correctly. And they usually want to blame the pancreas. Ah, oh, man, stupid pancreas just didn't doing stuff right. You need to take these enzymes instead. And the reality is that as we age, our stockpile of enzymes really can diminish, especially the way that we eat now where we're cooking all this food and we're eating all this processed junk. We're just not getting as many enzymes. And then there can be a lot of malfunctions that go on as we age that restrict the amount that we're producing. But when someone's having a real problem, it's usually because the pancreas is not being told, hey, it's time to do the job. The thing that triggers the pancreas is the same thing that triggers this gallbladder to squirt this alkaline bile down to help neutralize the acids from the stomach and help us break down our dietary fats, all those things that really help us break our food down. And that's cholecystokinin. And cholecystokinin here in the duodenum is triggered by stomach acid leaving the stomach. So cholecystokinin is triggered by either stomach acid, amino acids, or fatty acids. So if you eat dietary fats, that can trigger this cholecystokinin. Um, stomach acid leaving the stomach triggers it or amino acids. But amino acids aren't usually going to be leaving the stomach unless they were broken down by stomach acid and this pepsin. So it's usually a lack of stomach acid that is causing this cholecystokinin not to be triggered. And that's what triggers the gallbladder to squirt the bile down, but it also triggers the pancreas to squirt out bicarb that helps us neutralize these acids but it also squirts out all of these enzymes that help us break that food down further. So usually when somebody's really broken and their pancreas is like, ah oh, man, you gotta go to a garage sale and get a new pancreas, yours isn't working correctly. It's usually because there's a lack of stomach acid or maybe there's some type of bacterial overgrowth and the waste from that overgrowth is neutralizing those acids. There's usually those types of malfunctions 
and that's why the person really isn't getting any enzymes. So if we're gonna use some type of proteolytic enzymes that really help somebody break down protein, that person is usually pretty broken. And understand that our goal would be to help them fix these digestive malfunctions so they no longer need to take such aggressive enzymes. We view these proteolytic enzymes as a little bit more aggressive because keep in mind that these enzymes in the body have other purposes beyond just breaking down our food. They help us break down our tissues. We gotta break down these tissues in order to rebuild them. So they're part of that process that kind of helps that move along, break down, kill off these cells, get rid of them, bring in, rebuild new things. That's how the body is renewed, repaired, and regenerated. So that's an important aspect of these enzymes. So when we're looking at that understanding, we need to understand also who should not be using these enzymes. Because there's individuals that deal with what we call a catabolic imbalance. So the body should be in what's called a catabolic state during the day, and then at night it moves into an anabolic state at the cellular level. So during the day, it kind of helps us create energy and break down those tissues. And then at night, that anabolic state helps us sleep and rest and repair and rebuild. So both of those states are important. But for a lot of reasons, some people can get really stuck in one of those states most of the time. So if a person is stuck in this overly catabolic state all the time, which is really common, this was an issue that I dealt with myself, they'll kind of be breaking down all the time. They're never getting into that rebuild and repair state. So if a person is kind of always breaking down all the time, and then they throw a bunch of these aggressive proteolytic enzymes that are very good at helping the body break these tissues down, they could just be throwing gas on the fire. So I don't like to see somebody use these enzymes if they're dealing with what we call a catabolic state. So if you don't know where you are in that regard, if you're gonna use these enzymes, you really wanna use a smaller dose. Maybe you're not even using them every meal. Maybe you just use a capsule once or twice a day. Maybe you just use these with your larger protein meals that you really might just need a little bit of a boost. But I wouldn't use a whole lot of them if you don't know if you're dealing with this state. But we prefer to see somebody look at their chemistry and figure it out. The proteolytic enzyme that we use with our clients is called PL Enzymes from Empirical Labs. And the only site that's allowed to sell this enzyme to the public is, has it restricted, where you can't even buy it unless you have a special code that you get from a practitioner that you're working with. So we feel it's important for people not to just take these willy-nilly whenever they want. So this particular enzyme has a restriction on it where you can't even buy it unless you're working with somebody who knows what they're doing and can help you figure out if maybe you're leaning too far in this catabolic state. Now again, if you're talking about supplementing with enzymes, these are the type that are going to help you break down protein than anything else. But remember, even more effective than that is the pepsin and having this stomach be in a, an acidic environment. So our preference is to help somebody fix any low stomach acid issues. If their bile is not flowing because it's become too thick and sticky to flow, then we wanna help them thin that out because that bile coming down is part of what triggers this pancreas. Oh, we're doing stuff. Let's get, this, let's get these enzymes out there and let's really break this food down. All of these things have to work together. And then we'll use some type of broad-based digestive enzyme. Most digestive enzymes, a broad-based digestive enzyme that you're going to use, the one we use is called Digestizyme. And we just use that one because it contains like zinc and some other cofactors that helps the body make more of its own stomach acid. It gives it the nutrients it needs to produce more of its own stomach acid. So maybe a person won't have to supplement with betaine HCL for as long. But when you're using a broad-based enzyme like that, they usually contain some protease and some types of enzymes that are gonna help break down protein, but also like the lipase and the amylase and things that help you break down fats and carbohydrates as well. So for most people, we prefer to see them use some type of broad spectrum enzyme instead of something aggressive like a proteolytic enzyme. And when we do use these, it's usually because a person is having some severe issue where it's very obvious that they're not breaking down proteins correctly. Maybe they're not 
repairing connective tissue and those types of things the right way and we know that they are not accessing amino acids and so we might use these temporarily to help them give them a boost while we try to fix this digestive system so it'll work correctly without needing these. So I hope that helps. If you need help figuring out your digestive issues, we'll put a link in the description below for that totally free digestion course that'll walk you through figuring those things out. But right now, if you're not sure about this catabolic imbalance thing, you can jump over and check out our video on understanding a catabolic imbalance to understand how to figure out if that might be an issue for you. I can't wait to hear about your results.